Hello, BookTube. As I mentioned, uh, and I'll be mentioning in every video today, uh, BookTube loves its events. <laughs> BookTube loves events. Uh, and there are plenty of them every month. Now, I it, there are a lot of them to keep track of, probably more of them than anybody could keep track of, but you could let them guide your reading every minute of every day. Uh, and Leslie at the Nerdly Narrative actually does try to keep track of what events are coming out in any month and give you a sort of uh, menu that you can pick from, a la carte. If I remember, I will leave a link to the video where she does that so that you can uh, see the full list. I'm picking and choosing. I'm not talking about all of these things. But there are a few that I wanted to sort of second and talk about a little. And one of them comes from Katie at Books and Things, uh, who uh, is the one of the presiding geniuses of a couple of other major booktube events, but she loves her events too. <laughs> and she has one this time around. I've got, I've got the details on the iPad. That's why I'm looking off to the side here so that I don't block herself. The princess and I went for a walk earlier today. It is pleasant, blue-skied, and when you're walking around, it gets a little bit warm. Not hot, not even actually warm, but certainly the first taste of this sort of thing in quite some time, aside from freak, you know, afternoon exceptions. So we were both good and tired by the time we were done, which was nice. Uh, but this is the historical fiction read-along. I guess that Katie is spending her creativity elsewhere. <laughs> it was all used up with none to spare for naming this thing. <laughs> so it is, it's a historical fiction read-along, and you'll never guess what it's about. <laughs> it's a, it's a read-along about historical fiction, and there are uh, there are challenges. She, this the whole nine yards. Most of these you these booktube events ha are doing the whole nine yards, all the bells and whistles. This thing has a hashtag. It has a Goodreads group, uh, and there are challenges. And I'm going to let this guide a lot of my rereading in the month of May. I just think there's so many book, booktube events for May. Wouldn't it be fun to let them guide a lot of my rereading and some of my new reading? But historical fiction and I go way, way back. I love it to distraction. I, and uh, so most of the, I think all of the things on this list will be rereads except for one. Uh, so challenge number one is read a work of historical fiction set in the country you're from. For the purposes of this tag, we're going to assume that that's America. And the book that I'm going to reread is uh, The Pioneers by James Fenimore Cooper, uh, which is a Natty Bumpo story, but it, it's a, it serves as a very good reminder uh, to naysayers or detractors out there that the, the leather stocking tales are not just for kids. They have all sorts of extremely adult resonances in them and passages of startlingly beautiful prose. If you only know James Fenimore Cooper or Natty Bumpo from The Last of the Mohicans, you won't know that. If you've never read The Prairie or The Pioneers, you won't know that. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to reread The Pioneers with, uh, with a lot of care and attention. Uh, then uh, the next prompt is read a work of historical fiction set in a different country uh, from the one you're from. I, I'm going to choose Russia. <laughs> and I'm going to a Penguin Classic. Quite a few of my suggestions, uh, my ideas for challenges in all of these uh, booktube events for May our Penguin Classes. I am going to go back to Childhood, Boyhood, and Youth by Leo Tolstoy. There's Leo Tolstoy when he was a jog-eared, grim, super hottie. Totally different effect once he grew a huge beard and grew up and got even even seedier and even crazier. Uh, but this is, a, this is a book of his that I don't know all that well. Uh, so the Penguin Classic is going to have an introduction that will be invaluable to me. It will have notes. I don't know who does the translation here, but this is a Tolstoy that I don't know all that well. And when I was thinking about this prompt, I thought, well, you know, good, <laughs> good. It'll be a perfect opportunity for you to go back and get acquainted with this book. Uh, then the next prompt is read a work of historical fiction set in your favorite historical time period. Uh, I have quite a few, but there's one that's been on my mind. Uh, I spotted a copy at a charity shop and also at uh, the in the used book basement of a friend's church. So there are copies out there. Uh, and there might even be an e-copy. For all I know, it's uh, Mika Waltari. It's the Roman. Uh, this author did. This is an English language translation. Again, I don't have uh, who did this, but this author did a number of freestanding books: the the Etruscan, the Egyptian, and this is the Roman. Uh, it's a it's a big, I imagine, fairly stodgy Roman historical novel. I think I read this in a mass market paperback eons ago, during a glut of reading Roman historical fiction. I don't remember it well enough at all in detail in specific considering uh what a bestseller it was i'll pop this author is completely gone now these books are completely gone from the world but once upon a time these things were eagerly waited for and seriously considered uh and i given that 
given what I know of that, I really need to go back to this and read it again. I should go back and reread them all. Uh, then the next prompt is a, uh, read a work, uh, the prompt number four is read a work of historical fiction set in a time period you're less familiar with. So we're going to pass on that prompt. Uh, and move on to prompt number five. Read a work of historical fiction with a speculative element. Uh, naturally, my mind turns to, you know, one of the three or four creators of the whole genre of science fiction. And there's one in particular that I've been kind of wanting to get to, kind of wanting to reread. And it's H.G. Wells, of course. It's The First Men in the Moon. Uh, I chose this as an evocative cover, but I have this as an ebook. I think, in the science fiction and fancy Golan's Masterwork series. I think I have an ebook of that. Uh, I don't think that I have First Men in the Moon in any print version. Pretty sure that I don't. I once upon a time had one of those uh, running press Fall River uh, anthology volumes. I had one of those once for H.G. Uh, Wells. Really nice thing. Had you know, tripods attacking London on the cover. Uh, but I got rid of it. I remember I sent it to one of you who, who said, you know, the usual things. I really want that. I, I love H.G. Wells. That's a beautiful edition. I live in a book desert. I don't have any means of getting to a used bookstore. I don't want to order it online. If you hit me with that kind of a sad so sob, sob story, I'm probably going to send you the book. So I did. So I don't, I'm not sure that I have First Man in the Moon in print at all. Uh, but I do have the ebook, so I'll be reading that. Uh, then prompt number six is read a work of historical fiction about a real historical figure or historical event. Uh, and again, we're going to be back to going back to Penguin Classics and to the Victorian era, or slightly before. Uh, Katie will be happy with that. Uh, this is Kenilworth by the great Sir Walter Scott. Uh, the deals it culminates anyway. Eventually, it deals with the, the visit that Queen Elizabeth I makes to the eponymous house uh, and deals all about her, the England at the time of her relationships with uh, Robert Dudley. Uh, I love Scott and regularly slot his books in for rereads, but it's been a while since I reread Kendallworth. Uh, so this prompt comes along at just the right time. Uh, then the, uh, the next prompt is uh, read a class, or uh, read a uh, classic work of historical fiction. And I'm going to lump Kendallworth under that. I think, I think that counts as a classic work of historical fiction. Uh, and then the uh, bonus challenge here is read a work of historical fiction over 500 pages. Uh, and for that, I'm going to pick the one book on my list that is not a reread. <laughs> it's, it's instead uh, the, one of the biggest books, one of the biggest novels that will be published this year from a mainstream press. It's uh, David Adams Cleveland, and it's Gods of Deception. And it counts, technically, as a historical novel. Huge chunks of it are set. Uh, in her video, I'll leave a link to, to uh, the books and things announcement video for this readathon. Uh, and in that video, she mentions the one of the official definitions of historical fiction is anything set 60 years more in the past. Uh, when I worked for the Historical Novel Review, our definition was that the bulk of the book has to take place at least 50 years in the past. Uh, I think you're okay if you fudge it either way. The, 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 a large chunk of this book centers around the Alger His trial, uh, which is... 70 years ago, almost. So, so that's, that's good enough. This, that's certainly good enough. I don't think anyone would, would quibble at calling this historical fiction. Uh, I don't know. Maybe they would, but this is the one that I'm going to do. And this is well over 500 pages. This is twice that long. Uh, so, uh, I've left it alone until now. I have the advanced copy, uh, but I've left it alone until now. The kick in the pants will be when I get the immense finished copy, which will come in its own box, I imagine. Uh, so that's it. That is, those are my suggestions. Those are the things that I'm going to be trying for the Historical Fiction Readathon uh, put on by Books and Things. <laughs> I'll leave a link to the announcement video there. And once again, uh, as with all of these announcement videos that I'm making, I would love to know the whole nine yards. I am, oh, I am incredibly nosy. I would love to know, are you going to participate in this event? If so, what are your answers to some of these challenges? And also, more broadly, do you read historical fiction? Are you a fan of historical fiction? I'd love to know. <laughs> so feel free to tell me. Uh, and anyway, I'm going to wrap this up. I've got other announcement videos to make, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, Booktube.